It's Emily. Today it's just practicing and I'm going to practice Morceau de Concours by Gabriel Fauré. Um, also, just before I begin, uh, you can visit our Patreon page at um, Patreon, Patreon uh, the Flute Channel. You can find everything on our on our page, and uh, that I'm so sorry that helps us with um, making more content. And uh, yes, so I'm going to uh, start the music. Okay, so first thing is that. The piano part here in that music plays all the all the um, quarter notes, so um, it sounds a little bit uh, improvised, but it still has to be um, a little bit measured in a way because the pianist has to follow you, and if it's too, you know, it's a written improvisation, I think. So I think I'm gonna subdivide it. I'm gonna practice with the metronome and subdivide um, each eight note. So I put my metronome like this, and that's my eight note. On my music, it's written 44. Um, Adagio ma non troppo. Yeah, for me, it's a bit fast, I think. I'll try it, and I'll see how I feel with it. I'll practice it a bit slower. I'll put it at 72. to write the, the D flat because when I miss it once then I tend to miss it again you know when you learn a bad note the first time then it becomes more difficult so you know your brain recorded it that way so here I'm gonna put the flat and I'm going to breathe at bar six just after the first D flat and other places to breathe will be um um, if you can, wait until bar four and breathe during that rest, that would be great. If you can't, you see on the third bar, you have second bar of the melody, but third bar of the whole piece. You have a C that's a bit longer and you can breathe there. You can go... could be a place but it's better if you don't have to breathe there and you can go just before the low C sharp at bar seven and then after the F at bar nine. Um, yeah. If you have any question, comments, you can leave them. And if they're related to the piece, I'm gonna answer them right away. And if not, I'm gonna answer them at the end of the, of the live stream. So. Spain, Ethiopia, Hungary, Switzerland, Netherlands, Uruguay. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so cool to have people from everywhere like that. Okay, so. What is your flute brand? My flute is a Sankyo artist with a Wimberley head joint. Wimberley is a flute maker in Halifax, but I think he doesn't make flutes anymore. But yeah, his head joint is 
great, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna do it again. I think I like 72. And also I wonder if you if you notice that that piece makes me think a lot of this, you know, um, I don't remember the, no the number of the Mozart concerto that goes like this. You know, second movement of the one that goes, uh, that's the first movement. I'm not sure I'm playing it in the right key though, because it's just, uh, I'm playing an F here, but it's the same type of uh, feeling and starts with an arpeggio like that. Whatever, maybe listen and tell me if you think it's uh, like cousins. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna do it again. So if if you're learning that and technically it's difficult for you, I would advise to start very slowly and subdivide each eight note. So maybe, uh, especially if the faster passages are difficult, you know, you put it at maybe 60 and you can play it like this. increase slowly and uh, you can practice those little parts because really here you go from the C I'm in the, the second bar of the piece go to the C from the one C to the other and if you group all that in your head instead of thinking of each note and you just put your thumb on the on the B flat key then you're just doing a scale so you can practice it like that then you just have to add the rhythm but the the movement is is already there you think piano concerto number 21 c major i am not sure i think the first movement is in g mm. but old memories i am not sure i couldn't find the music i used i had it i played it but i don't know where i put it um yeah, so you can practice it like that, you know, and the other, the bar three, you can practice it. You can go from A to G, you know, and you can play it also with little rhythms. So you do one long, one short, ta da 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 da, and then you do the opposite, short, long. until you can what's very important is to continuously blow during those uh, finger movements because sometimes when we move our fingers we tend to stop supporting but you need to you need to fill up uh, you know the gap between the, the notes you want it to it's like yeah, there's one person blowing and one person moving the fingers and they don't talk to each other the person just and the fingers are moving but there's no it's as if you were playing organ and the organ just goes the air is the person moving the playing on the keyboard doesn't take care of the air at the same time and maybe you think like this when you play this piece because you always need to support and uh, the fingers are the air is always under i hope that's clear okay um and you want to have light fingers because it's you know and not too many um, accents but you still need to put some more um, weight on some notes so you don't lose yourself you know with the um, fingers so um, I'll go from bar four you see here at bar four I think I played a bit too loud I should stay piano there Maybe change the color, I'll write color. Uh, changing the color, really it's usually you change the um, vowel in your mouth. And let's say, I, I don't know if you can hear it very well. Let's say I play piano. You, you can still find 
a different way of playing it. So. You see, I, I, I played it with a little bit less timber on bar four. Okay, so I go on. So here it's very important to go all the way to the D flat. You don't stop until you get there because that's the that's your goal. Okay, bar five goes to the first note of bar six. So you get there. natural decrescendo on the last notes you know at bar nine G and then F um, naturally musically it's nice to do it like that and um, you'll have to compensate for intonation by blowing the air a little bit higher so the sound doesn't go you see so I blow a little bit higher and I um, I keep the speed up, you know, the air speed has to even a little bit faster. Okay, I'll put the metronome and I'll go from bar 9. Okay, so it's oh I'm very slow yeah it's a tempo for practicing yeah so also here a bit more That's the first. Um, the thumb port. Yeah. Be able to know, is it useful? The thumb port, it's very useful to me. So I put it here under the um, third key, here, the index finger key. And uh, at first, I didn't think I needed it, but I thought I'll buy one to um, for my students to try to see if it could help some of them. And uh, I started practicing with it. At first, it felt a bit weird because I wasn't used to it. So, you know, my thumb was a bit, you know, my hand had to adapt. But now I can't, like, when I don't have it, I, I look for it right away. I really need it now. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's helpful. You can, you can try it and see how it feels for you. And, but it's a good... It's a good investment. It's not that expensive, so it's worth buying and trying it out. Or if you have a friend that can lend it to you, or a teacher. Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe uh, you know when you have those octaves. And one thing that's very important is really to subdivide because the rhythm, it needs to be a little. You know, you need to understand it. Once you understand it, you can do rubato. But rubato is not just playing however you want. It's understanding the rhythm and really deciding that you're going to go faster and slower in specific spots. So it's not about just, <laughs> oh, it's romantic. You know, you, you still have to understand what's going on rhythmically because you have triplets that are worth the eight notes. So you have to go da 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 da
So make sure you really understand the rhythm. Uh, those octaves here, I think they're interesting to practice. So. And the dynamics are interesting too, because it's really a piece for that, you know, to show dynamics and uh, legato. So the, the goal when you practice that is really dynamics and legato. That's what you should really focus on. So for legato, you need to blow the air constantly and dynamics, well, it's uh, about opening more and then closing more. But yeah, I'll make a video about how to still play in tune and play loud and stuff and all those things because it's a, it's a big thing. It's a big topic. And I, I would advise to practice it with the tuner as well. Is there a question? No. Oh, okay. Oops. I'll play it with the tuner once because it's a very good thing to do. That's one way to practice with the tuner. You just try to keep the little line in the middle. And another way would be to just play a note, have a drone sound. So that's an F. The piece is an F, so I could play it with an F. Some notes are very dissonant because it's, uh, you know, the the interval is not necessarily always, uh, but it, it forces you to really listen to that note and try to be in tune with it. So it's a good way to practice. And um, yeah, my last note, I wasn't very happy with that high F. That one's better, but I'm going to try to play it after I played the last phrase. When I tongue it, it's a bit more difficult than when I slur it. Uh, maybe I could not tongue it or maybe I'll try to not let the tongue disturb the air. I'll see how I can do this. one 
one was better, but then I still need to be able to play it with the whole thing before. delicate that mm -hmm. little part. A lot of people like it. A lot of people said beautiful sound and uh, very good. Um, Two Songs wants to know how could I know if I'm high or loud without a tuner? If you're loud or if, high? No, how are you? If you're high or probably out of tune, like you're high or low probably. Yeah, well, you can hear it without a tuner if you're trained. You can use a piano and play notes and try to make sure a tuned piano, of I'm course. With drones, probably drone training helps a lot to get reference pitches. Yeah, like I just did. You play a note and then you, let's say uh, you have a piano. You can also do it with a piano. You put the pedal. Let's say you put the pedal. Well, I'm not in the right position, but you put the pedal the that keeps the sound, and then you play. Let's say F, and then you can play your F major scale and try to be in tune with that F. Or you can also play random notes and try to be in tune with those notes and try to really listen and play with others. What does in tune feel like? Because what do they have to look for? Well, when you have this, it's not in tune, you know, you have to, but yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. You have to bring it to the same level. If, if it's not, you'll hear a little, bzzz, you know, like a little vibration that's not vibrato and you'll know it's that. Um, little waves, yeah, so you eliminate the waves, but uh, yeah, but a tuner, you can have an app on any device, you know, you put an app, and usually you have a drone, and you have the, the little arrow, the arrow, if you play in tune with the arrow, it doesn't mean you're playing in tune completely, you still need to use your ears, that's an exercise, just to help you see which notes are too high or too low, sorry, on your flute, um, it's, it gives you, uh, how I would say that, it gives you, um, you know, just like a road to walk on. You know, you're like, okay, those are the tendencies. But then it doesn't make everything in tune because when we play in a certain key, some notes will be higher or lower and the tuner doesn't take that into consideration. So you still should play with a drone or when you or play with piano and really use your ears. So... Is it? Uh, nice, yeah, nice answer. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, is there questions about no, the piece? No, people really like it though. They never, some people never heard of that piece before, which is really cool. And uh, it's short. It's a short little show it's piece. You know? Yeah, it's short. It's a good um, encore piece, yeah, I it's think. It's a really good encore piece. Yeah. And a lot of people recommend for next time, maybe do a Mozart or do Poulenc. Okay. New ones, you know. We did a couple forays, two forays in a row. Yeah. yeah we like we were inspired by forays lately yeah. in February. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. comforting. Yeah. Comforting months. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, it's usually played twice. It's usually repeated. It's, uh, because it's so short, it's only a minute and a half long. But oh. People usually repeat people it. People repeat it. Yeah. So I guess second time you play it, you should maybe make different... Yeah. differences you know yeah. something you played loud you might want to play soft or um yeah make changes in the vibrato maybe the retardando you do only the second time then you know first time you go <laughs> ah, that was not nice again but the second time at the end you would do the retardando and I would do a big one you know really take your time so I hope this helps and um, for breathing I think it's pretty straightforward you have a lot of little rests or after a long note that's slurred um so yes i hope that was helpful and uh, if you have any questions or comments just leave them in the box below and uh, if you like the video please like it if you haven't subscribed please subscribe 
and you can also go and visit our Patreon page to help us create more content. Thanks so much.